Hi friends, welcome back to the Daily Bible Project podcast. And we're in episode 190, which is part 121 of season 2. And we're looking together through Genesis chapter 16. That's the point we're up to. And we're at the point in the text where we hear about this rather challenging story of we hear about Abraham sleeping with his slave Hagar under the prompting of Sarah. So I'll just recap on the text. We're just going to be covering Genesis 16, 3 and 4 today. And it tells us this. Sarah, his wife, took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. Now we heard last time that thanks to the new covenant with Abraham, we saw that God put a hedge around individual men and women. Now this promise means that there may be a judgment now when you stray beyond God's limits, but there won't ever again be a general judgment like there was in the flood. God says he'll never do things again in that way because we're now all individually accountable. That's why the new covenant with Abraham is so important. Uh, It's no longer just a written code. It's something that in the fullness of time we will discover can be written into the hearts and minds of individual men and women. But that means in order for individuals to understand the benefit of the new promise that, that God had given Abraham to hear, that a codex was written. The law was first would be placed on parchment before eventually being revealed into the hearts of men and women in the the new covenant. This original covenant, the first one made with Abraham, he later recorded in a documented form. But then again, a new covenant would come along and we too, just like him in his day, we too must play our part in maintaining it. Sadly today, for most people, they no longer, they not only know about it, but those that have heard about it don't really know what it means. But back in the day, Abraham was very concerned about what this promise might meant for him and future generations. And God was clearly concerned too. He promises, which is why he makes this promise to say Abraham, that the covenant would go on working for him forward in time and his family line and it would bring to him everything that he needs. So that's the position and that's the promise that was revealed. But then after a long gap of years, Sarah comes along and says, I'm not really happy about the fact that I haven't had any children yet. And she reached the conclusion that the Lord must have kept her from having children. Therefore, she says to Abraham, go and sleep with my slave girl, Hagar. Perhaps I can build a family line through her. So that's not a small thing, but recognize that Hagar is the slave of Sarah, not Abraham directly. Now, I don't imagine that Sarah was exactly happy about what's going on here. The thought of turning over her maid to her husband, she must have known that this potentially meant that that, that she would be usurped in the whole childbearing and the inheritance thing. So on the face of this, on the face of it, this might appear to be a major sacrifice on Sarah's part. But what happens in this chapter will have a profound impact not only on Abraham and Sarah, but on the world today, right up to this day. If you've been going through this book of Genesis with me, especially since chapter 12, you'll know that in this Abraham story, that this promise was first revealed to God way back in chapter 12. In fact, not just that he would have children, but a multitude of children would come and out of him would come a great nation. Then in chapter 13, he says there's going to be so many children, they're going to be like grains of the sand. And then he comes back again in chapter 15. God appears to Abraham again, reveals himself to Abraham again in chapter 15 and says, you know, Abraham, these children that are coming are going to be like stars in the sky. That's how innumerable they're going to be. You're going to have so many children, you're not even going to be able to count them. And in chapter 15, God ratifies that contract and says, I absolutely promise I'm going to do this. You're going to have a son and that son and through that son, you're going to have more descendants than you can even imagine. But here we are in chapter 16 and he hasn't even got and she hasn't even got pregnant yet. And you've got to remember at this point, Abraham's 85 years old and she's 75 years old. 
and it's 10 years since God originally revealed himself and spoke to Abraham about this. So Sarah here in this opening verse went to Abraham and says, you know what, go sleep with my slaves. Perhaps I can have a family through her. And Abraham agrees to what Sarah says. Now that sounds strange to us today, and I'm sure we wouldn't think that was the correct thing to do in that day. But as a matter of fact, this would not have been considered unethical amongst people at that time. In that day, the slave was the property of the wife, and according to the culture of the day, this type of, act of behavior was perfectly legitimate. One of the main duties of the wife was to bear children, and if she didn't, she could use the maid to bear children on her behalf. As a matter of fact, the religious code that, pre that existed at that time and preceded the Ten Commandments, the code that operated in that area, was called the, Ho the Code of Humarabai. And it would said exactly that this is what you should do. In fact, in their codified laws, this was number 46. So this was the custom of the day, the normal custom of the day. But of, in the light of what's going on in Sarah's life and Abraham's life, there is, of course, a difference here. What's going in there, what has gone on in their life is God had promised them that they were going to have a child, Abraham, through Sarah. So her going to Abraham and suggesting this, it shows a real lack of faith, doesn't it? She's not trusting in the Lord. She's not living by sight. She's not living by faith. So what did Abraham think? What did Abraham do? On a practical level, he probably thought, well, according to the customs of our day, there's not really anything wrong with this, ethically or morally. But remember, God said the air would come out of his body. And unfortunately, just like Adam before him, who followed Eve, Abraham listens to the voice of his wife. So there's unbelief going on here on both parts. And the text, as I said, tells us Sarah, his wife, took her Egyptian slave to Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. And he slept with Hagar and she conceived. So I wonder how this is all going to work out, eh? Well, we'll find out in the next episode. Thanks for joining me. And it's bye for now from the Bible Project Podcast. See you back here again very soon. Bye.